The acceleration of globalization epitomized the first decade of the 21st century, allowing individuals to communicate and collaborate using social networks while sharing the contents of their pocketbooks through electronic commerce. A more intimate planet could also bring tragedy, and none was more deep than 9-11. Yet globalization also delivered diversity, insight, and opportunities, all in real time. The always open concept was equally vibrant in the realm of business computing. Linux became the fastest growing operating system on the planet, an open source option that thrived on Big Iron across myriad industries. In the first decade of the new millennium, the mainframe was not only back, it was helping to once again dictate the direction of business computing. IBM has been uh, very, very responsive to the, the marketplace and their customer demands and, and have morphed the mainframe into something that is as modern and as full function as every other technology and even, even actually more so. We do our best to try to adapt any innovation from anywhere in the industry uh, to take advantage of it and, and be able to deliver it to our mainframe customers. The thing about the mainframe that's pretty exciting today is you consider that it's existed for 45 years now, yet it still continues to change every day to meet the business needs. Things that used to be significantly different between the mainframe and these other platforms have sort of faded into insignificance. And the same kinds of development languages, the same kinds of databases, the same kinds of interoperability with the, the networked world and the wired world and the internet world, uh, all are fully supported and fully uh, you know, developed on the mainframes. IBM invested heavily in Linux and people were scratching their heads wondering they thought maybe this was just because they had uh, missed the boat when they let uh, Microsoft take away the, the DOS operating system. But um, the fact is that their Linux investment is paying off spades now. It was around 2001 and we had just begun this journey towards Linux running on the mainframe. It was a great idea that some, some of my team in, in Germany had come up with to port Linux to the mainframe. And, we were just beginning to see the possibilities of, of what this, this additional operating system could give us in the, in the Z world. People looked at Linux as a way of saving money. It's not really the case. Uh, there's an expression that free software is only free if your time is worth nothing. And people looked at Linux as free software. What you're really getting is the portability. In much the same way that Java gave you an application binary portability, Linux has the same operating system as we say Linux is Linux is Linux on x86 power mainframe so you could pick the best hardware platform to meet your workloads. Today we look at I'd say maybe 15-20% of our mainframe customers are running Linux production workloads. And I'll give credit where credit is due here and that's Google. Google runs a Linux based environment and that has got customers looking, okay if this huge corporation is basing their business on it, maybe it's safe to do and I should use it. And we're really seeing that mindset change. It's often asked, why are mainframes different? We can deliver vertical scale. Now what I mean by that, most other platforms in the world, if you run out of capability, you add a box, you add another box, you add another operating system, you add another image, and you scale horizontally. And that's pretty good. We can do that too. But what we can also do is vertical scalability. And that means that you could have a, a workload running that for some reason is not meeting its goals. You're not meeting your service level agreements. We can literally scale up that application while it's running. That would be the equivalent of adding horsepower to a car while you're driving on the highway. This is the only system in the world that you can add resources to a running workload while it's in the middle of running and actually make a difference and improve that response time. Being able to keep up with the on-demand uh, level of business that people are just accustomed to these days, I think is really, is really one of the main thing of strengths. 
We have most recently uh, used IBM's capacity on demand facility. Almost instantaneously, um, you can upgrade your machine for MIPS, uh, turn them on, turn them off whenever you want. Uh, and we have used it uh, during uh, some of our peak periods uh, during the month. You don't need to upgrade your machine physically. You don't need to have anybody touch the box, open it up, power it down. You, you, you go through the process, the code is downloaded, your machine is up and running, and when you don't want it anymore, you just undo it and then it goes away. The mainframe is a, is a platform of choice for many, many kinds of applications. It's still today the most secure, the most scalable, uh, the, the able to sustain the highest kinds of transaction volumes and data volumes at the lowest cost per transaction. That is a competitive edge and the fact that, uh, that when you're dealing with massive, massive amounts of data and massive numbers of transactions, uh, you need a platform that will support that and the mainframe has, has shown itself to be the premier platform there and I think that will continue. As long as investment continues, as long as customers uh, continue to demand more, uh, you know, the mainframe community will continue to deliver more. With the first decade of the new century coming to a close, the future of the mainframe was wide open. With 1,600 applications introduced on the platform between 2007 and 2010. And the alluring attributes that had initially drawn organizations to centralized computing were back in vogue. The 21st century mainframe was retooled and reinvigorated for 2010 and beyond.